Many call it a cult film, but we're calling it a classic. There can be only one. Only one what? Stay with us to find out as we discuss 1986's Highlander. We'll be right back. Get ready for the 3324 Podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Coover share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome, friends, to the 3324 Podcast. Dean Legiro here with you behind the microphone. Eric Cooper in Hello. Maryland, from in what Maryland. he just revealed. I didn't know that. <laughs> No, I, thought, Dean, I thought he was from Bar- in Barbados doing this show, but he just revealed he's actually in the States. I thought that was top secret planet. information. Yeah. Truth- Maryland um, is actually well, called the Barbados of the U.S. So it's just yeah. <laughs> well, it feels like it. It's, then what's it's, Jersey? It's, oh, my God. The humidity <laughs> here is ridiculous. If, if, yeah. if, Maryland is, if Maryland is Barbados, what's New Jersey? Well, D.C. Yeah. Is, is swampland. It's not, it used to be yeah. just Ooh. nothing but swampland. So, yeah. uh, you know. That's the border. We're, just, the border we're like – 20 minutes away from DC, you know, yeah, right? it's, uh, on a good it's, day. It's the border of Gator Country. We know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and and if, uh, if, if you're wondering who that gentleman is, that's Roland Arucci making his second appearance yes, with us. Welcome, welcome. aboard for Thank another you. great sci fi fantasy film that I'm, I'm picking up a trend with this gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> I asked him if he wanted to do Shakespeare. He's like, thou I, shalt I not, he said, Thou shalt not ask not, me that ever, not, if, not, if, ever if again. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't well, date much. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, Nick Leshy with us, always great. He's got a blog, oh, City yes. of Kick. You should check that out. He does a lot of entertainment and pop culture blogging. We'll drop a link to that great blog in the show notes. Welcome aboard as well, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Looking this forward is to talking what, about your this. 10th time now. <laughs> oh, man. I stopped counting. Something like that, right? Yeah. Stop counting. We're yeah. Gonna, we're going to stop. Yeah. We're, you know, I'm running out of, I'm, I've been making a notch <laughs> on the windowsill every time. And now my landlord thinks I'm eating the wood. So I have to just stop, you know, I have to just stop doing it. It's like that, Saturday so. Night Live when they have like the five timers club or whatever That's it was. It. Yeah. yeah. Well, you yeah. surpassed you that. The robe. Or kind sir. Yeah. We'll have yes. to, uh, We'll have to send you the the, the new and improved. Thank hat. you. You know, oh, new and improved. Hat. <laughs> new and improved hat. Maybe maybe nice. that's established. I don't know if, it's, <laughs> if if I get if I get if you get one before Eric, Eric is going to drive up <laughs> to see me, uh, and and I won't know he's here. I'm just going to my 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 car will be spray painted like scumbag. No, I'll be, and I'll the, be standing, the tires will be standing in the corner. <laughs> What There's a line outside house. underneath the, the, the <laughs> Barbados land. written on the side of the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greetings from the Barbados U.S. There you That's go. Um, so we're, we're talking about a great film today. Before we get to that, though, you know what? Check us out on social media. We're at 3324 Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. It's a great group of like-minded individuals that love classic film, classic movies, new music, new movies as well. We we, co- we cover it all. So go ahead and, and dig into all the great stuff we have there. Plus, if this is your first episode, we've got a backlog, a back catalog mm. uh, of a lot of great music and movie content to check out as well. So won't you do that? That would be great. And then, you know what? Since I'm going for it, if you listen to us on Spotify, give us a rating. You can give us up to five stars. Yeah. And give us some uh, and comments too. We always welcome yeah. feedback and comments. Well, what are we doing wrong? What are we doing right? Yeah. Is is right. are you enjoying it? Uh, and then like of course, like- say, Eric always asks what we're doing wrong. So that means that goes to him. <laughs> he wants to know what we're doing wrong. I just want to hear the good stuff. Well, I want well, the gravy. Well, yeah. Well, I, you know, <laughs> he wants the burnt toast. I want the gravy. <laughs> And of so course, we, I we always welcome ideas for for in subjects yeah. for for you know potential episodes and absolutely yeah and the live show as well. So you know we like seeing that's faces right. We do on live air. shows as well. So, yep. Every every other oh. Wednesday we do live shows too. So if you want to come and heckle and, and harass, you can do that. <laughs> the internet is free. It's free to join. So we won't charge. We'll uh, no. you know we welcome that as well. So yep. let's focus in on what we've got here. This. Uh, this this movie was one of the first one we, we talk a lot I say this a lot in our episodes when we talk about music and movies but when when I was compiling my original list of of stuff to present or stuff that we wanted to talk about this was one of the first films that I wrote on the list just because we didn't get to it right away doesn't mean it, it wasn't there and Highlander for for I know for Eric and I speaking for Eric uh is a much cherished film for us mm-hmm. um yeah. and that's why I said in the beginning a lot of people consider this a cult film 
uh, we consider it a classic. So let's let's get into the stats, and then we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll kind of get into uh, into the discussion about. It. So this was released released in March of 1986, direct, directed by Russell Mulcahy, story by Gregory Wyden, and I, and I think it's important just to throw his name out there just because mm-hmm. of his yeah. circumstances of his screenplay are pretty interesting. Uh, I had a 19 million dollar budget. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, 12.8 million dollar box office so it bombed yeah. as far as box office goes and, and return on investment it it didn't make back what it was supposed to no. do um d- despite you know despite the star power we'll roll into the cast a little bit there's four main players you've got christopher lambert <laughs> not lambert uh you've got roxanne hart cl- the great clancy brown yep. and of course mr sean connery so that mm. that rounds out like your your main cast. Now, a couple of just let's go around. I want to find out a little bit from Nick and Roland what your connection is to this film or when you when did you first see it? Roland, why don't you why don't you kick oh, us sure. off? Sure. Sure. Actually, I saw it on HBO growing up as a, a super son in Brooklyn. We got free cable when I was a kid, <laughs> uh, which meant actually only HBO. So it wasn't cable. <laughs> it was Brooklyn. So uh, I remember watching this repeatedly with with, with my brother and in, in our in our little adjoining studio apartment. It's, that's how we. That's how you spread your family when you're a super. Uh, you, got, you rented an apartment for your kids. So you got the free apartment and you rented a studio. So me and my go. brother slept in the studio. Uh, cool. For, down the hall for my parents. But I remember watching this at night, and, and I loved it. I'll be honest with you. When I was a kid, I loved it. Uh, re- reviewing it and being the crit, the critical old man with the gray hair now. Uh, you know, I, I I found it interesting. It's a compelling story. That's my connection. I, I think that's always been part mm-hmm. of it. It's a compelling story. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of the movement of it. Uh, you have Clancy Brown, like you mentioned. That guy has been in everything. I remember I first saw him in Bad Boys when I was a kid, mm. and he was a presence in that that movie, The Viking. And, uh, yeah, and he and yeah. uh, and all the way to you know today when I see him in everything, I'm like, I know that guy. Yeah. And, uh, and and Sean Connery, which you know, he just brings Sean Connery to everything. Of course. But, uh, so th- that yeah. that is sort of my yeah. <laughs> so that is <laughs> like my connection with it. Uh, you know, I probably found it a little humorous back then too, because there sure. are some. Some like yeah, uh, it's, it's got some it's moments campy. of levity. It's yeah, it's got a little campiness to it. It's got you know the fight scenes are really campy and yeah, some it's got a little bit of a light touch, light touch where needed. And that's the right. I think that's right. the sci-fi fantasy part of it too. Like right. You, you it don't hear, you hear a lot of, of sci-fi and action. You don't really yeah. hear sci-fi fantasy thrown around a lot anymore. Yeah, you don't. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a lost term. Nick, Nick, what about you? When, when did you uh, when did you catch this first? I would say it's exactly the like the poster child of what a cult movie experience no, is. No, no. I didn't hear about it. I, I mean, I consider myself a movie fan since I was a kid, but I didn't really hear about it until I was at a graduation party and in one of the rooms, everybody's around the TV just watching television, you know? And I'm like, what are they watching? And they're like, Highlander. And I heard Islander and I'm like, what is it, a hockey movie? What, what is that? <laughs> yeah. I literally knew nothing about it. And I'm seeing sword fights and I'm seeing all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. So I went back home I, or I went to Blockbuster and I got the, you know, and I saw it and I'm like, I, I really liked it, you know? So I think if you think about cult movies, people who went to see it at the movie theater, maybe they were let down by some of the campiness or, you know, yeah. Or, or they loved it, but nobody else heard about it. The marketing maybe was bad. Whatever it was, it got its second life through video and mm-hmm. through cable, oh, yeah. oh, right? Yeah. Um, and it became a franchise, right? And I, I still dare say this is one of those movies that maybe never should have had a sequel, never should have had anything We'll get else. into that. But <laughs> yeah. that's, that, that's how I discovered it. Exactly right. like the cult, you know, what you identify as a cult movie those people who kind of gravitated to it and like, okay, this is a cool thing after its initial failure at the box office. Yeah. All right. Eric, I, th- I think one of the reasons, story? Well, I'm one of the it, reasons. roll out your story. Well, it's our story, isn't it? <laughs> that's what I was waiting um, for. I was laying it out for, I was teeing it up. That's one of the reasons <laughs> why we do this podcast is because, and the reason why this particular movie is special because Dean and I had seen it together in the theater and we, you know, we were all over it. You know, we we knew nothing about it. Of course, we didn't have the advent of you know knowing what was to come. But but uh, Dean was like, we got to check this movie out. Queen's doing the soundtrack, and you know, and all that. So we we were in. So uh, yeah, so we saw it together. So it's one of those special moments where we, you know, Dean and I didn't really see a lot of films together growing up. Um, but this, yeah, this was definitely one of those movies, and was always it had to be talked about. That you know, yeah. so. 
Yeah, and we I just, think we grabbed we our friend Johnny get, too, right? Was yeah. it, wasn't Johnny with us? Our friend Johnny. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, and it, this was, it was the era when we would go see just a lot of stuff, like 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 everything. We were still unjaded by film. So yeah, 1986, uh, you know, 20, 20 years old, just on the cusp of 20. We would still just go whatever was playing. And this yeah. obscure film like Highlander was playing. And it was kind of like it, we went on Central Avenue in Yonkers to the Central Plaza. I remember it was playing in the upstairs theater, which was like the smaller theater. That's right. Where the, yep. where the big, the first run movies were, were in the main floor and the, you know, the stuff that was like, you know, not, not so sure about would be upstairs. And we went up, we went upstairs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was an experience like we like like I hadn't had before, uh, especially in that era of the mid '80s. You had Back to the Future that had just come out. Return mm -hmm. of the Jedi was was what '83. So this you know was was a, <clears throat> a, a a fertile ground for this kind of stuff to come out and for people. And some some uh, filmmakers were trying to capitalize on it, but Highlander wasn't that. Um, and especially when I when I watched it now, and I watched it as a, with a critical eye, meaning not watching it to enjoy it, but watch it as a film. Mm -hmm. I actually am going to advocate that this is actually more of an actually it's more of an epic film than than people think it is, uh, especially with the restored footage. So yeah, um, this is one. Yeah, this is one that that Eric and I have been like advocates for. Like w like we could say we knew Clancy Brown when, and we could say we knew Highlander. <laughs> yeah. Like we can claim this movie as our own. Because yeah. we we were one of the few people like, you know, what did it make? Twelve point eight million dollars. So about thirteen bucks of that, Eric and I contributed to. <laughs> That's absolutely right. So we, we've got a share. Yeah. We've got a share. You guys, you're a stockholder. We got a share. You know, we're a stockholder in this film, and you know, it was one of those movies <laughs> where we're an emotional you know, shareholder. At that point, I think at that point we kind of out dare I say that we almost outgrew Star Wars at this point, and we were ready for more adult driven sort of fantasy content you know you know i love going back to like the heavy metal magazines and and like the you know frank rosetta fantasy art and all that stuff conan the barbarian and all that kind of thing this this was right up that alley as well and it had that historical context to it which i'm really um amazed that sean grady had you know one of our other guests is not here tonight to talk <laughs> about this because he's such a history buff and i think he would really really dig this film um but um but yeah, I mean, we, we just from the get go, I mean, it's a movie that is, yeah, it is epic. I think, you know, not a, a lot of people don't give it enough credit, but it's an, it's, it's just so gritty looking and so ugly looking. And, uh, but that was the style in the day, the, mm. the MTV sort of look. And that's what I, that's what I miss today. It's like, everything looks so clean and, and digital and, and, and just, you know, and no matter how you try to make it look like it did back in the day, you just can't. You yeah. can't duplicate that, the graininess of it, the, you know, the way that the, the scenes transitioned into one to other. I'd never seen anything like that before. He did a more magnificent job with those, those edits of like the fish tank, for example. And then there's the scene of them in the water and the boat yep. and, you know, all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, Russell, yeah. Russell Mulcahy has to get uh, pro very probably yeah. underrated and underappreciated just, just on this film alone. Like Eric said, the, the transitions, the, the dolly, a lot of dolly work, a lot of helicopter shots. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't get that in a fly by nighter film. You get yeah. you get yeah. cut rate the budget. Yeah, trying to trying to trying to cheap that stuff out. You know, so when I watch when I watched it again, and I'm marveling at at some of those wide shots in Scotland when they're you know when they're yeah. fighting, you know when they're training, and and the dolly that's going around at the end in the in the last sort. I mean, th that's kind of you know. That's not low budget filmmaking. That's someone that's got a, a specific vision and a specific style. Right. That Russell Mulcahy, who was he was really known for making mu he was he was a music video director is what he was. Yeah. So he kind of cut his teeth on on being artsy in in three minute you know in three minute snippets, right? You can kind of work your way through and, and try different things with different artists and kind of develop this really flashy style. Mm -hmm. Didn't really parlay it into too much afterwards. I mean, he did The Shadow, which I kind of is underrated with Alec Baldwin. A lot of people don't like it. But, That's a good film. I actually um, like yeah. it. Yeah. But, yeah, but, he, but this one, he really kind of, it was his second feature, and he really kind of put a, put a visual stamp on this film that, you know, it's dynamic, it's kinetic. You know, the camera's moving, but in a good way, not in yeah. a choppy way that you can't see what's going on. He really, right. he dances yeah. around characters and and gives them room to move if need be and, and doesn't try and crowd it and then you feel like you don't know what's going on so um 
Yeah, that that let's go back just for a little history and then we'll then we'll geek out. Uh, I said the story was by Gregory Wyden. Gregory Wyden wrote wrote this script while he was an undergrad at UCLA. So mm-hmm. this was kind of like a project that he was just kind of working on. Uh, it doesn't resemble a lot of what the film would be, but he wrote this uh, and it ended up selling it for two hundred thousand dollars. So that's not bad for someone who's who's yeah. still in college. Uh, it's a great you know, story. Work, you know, usually got to yeah. get out of you got to get out of film school and and pay your dues and no one wants to read what you got. Right. And, yeah, and you're yeah. sending spec scripts at, to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Huh. Uh, so I think his teacher saw this and said, you got to get this, you know, he's got to get this. This is it was a terrific story. It's a, it's a, it's that one of those, I mean, oh God, I mean, the, it's, it's such a tall tale, of course, but, but the, the epic nature of it and just the way they go through, he goes through history and, and having all of those scenes and, yeah, you have to know a little bit about. I, I suppose he probably did some research on Scottish, mm. you know, Highlander life and you know that kind of thing. So, the clans and all that. So that's what I loved about it was bringing that into it and the history, and then and then filming it on location in Scotland. We, we can't say that enough. That alone is it's gorgeous there. You yeah, know? They didn't and use course- Vancouver. Or yeah, you know, right. like, now it's yeah, popular. Like, like let's go, to, no let's way. go to Canada yeah. and film it. You know, and, and, Barbados, yeah. Maryland, <laughs> Barbados, Maryland, That's Maryland. Uh. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so Roland, 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 what do you think of this? Um, originally up for the role of Connor McLeod, uh-huh. Kurt Russell. I read that too. I, you know. And Mark, Mark Singer to a lesser extent. Mark Singer yeah. is kind of a, a name from the eighties, Beastmaster. Yeah. Beastmaster. Kurt, yeah. Kurt Russell was tossed around. What do you think? Yeah, of that? yeah. That that would have been kind of interesting to see where it goes. The dialogue uh, with, with uh, you know the, with Christopher Lambert is that that's all, and even back then it kind of felt a little weird uh, with him because mm. it, it definitely this style of storytelling. Kurt Russell fit this era. He fit the film of this era entirely. Uh, from you know, Escape from New York, uh, and every other ma- you know action thing that he sort of popped off with, uh, and he, I could definitely see him doing this character as he fit that era. To me, like you were saying, this is you know, a, a, it's a, I think it's a DP film. It's a, it's a, it's definitely a director photography film. Some mm-hmm. of those shots are amazing. They're yeah, going yeah. to steady cams. They had those fly cams going over uh, yeah. for the arena shot in the beginning. Yeah, the rest, the wrestling uh, shot. In the yeah, beginning? that's Jeez. amazing. That was an amazing shot. I was like, I can't believe this. You know, I yeah. can't believe this. The camera work. I definitely see the MTV elements too. Uh, again, working like a, almost like a director of photography uh, point of view, it's like cologne shots of you know split screen, really close up, and things happen in the background. Yeah, and looking yeah. at, the, at the pupils. Storytelling. It felt very independent grungy carpenter uh kurt russell type of actors yes, as yep. leads i definitely see that so it's it's an interesting combination of those elements where you get a dp person who guy guy i want these beautiful camera shots these yeah. big camera shots where the money is in there uh and and really tell a story with those big ca- camera shots and then they want that that very grunge that very you know comic book Conan the Barbarian too. You mm-hmm. could have easily said Chris Lambert was Conan the Barbarian, yeah. jumping yeah. in a time yeah. jump, and it would have yeah. fit. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, why he wore, he wore raincoats for the whole thing. I mean, this is all like you know <laughs> yeah. new, new noir. Yeah, you know, that was his, yeah, that was his style. Yeah, that was yeah. his cape, is you know, is, is, is his lion skin of Hercules that he yeah. had to wear in almost in every shot. So it's, it's, yeah. it was really interesting. I, Kurt Russell, I think he would have nailed it probably too. The, the tempo. That you know, and and, and the, the beats of the film work with mm-hmm. a Kurt Russell or Kurt Russell lead. Nick, what opinion. do you think? Do you think he could? I can't imagine, and I don't know. Maybe check me on this. Has Kurt Russell ever done a film where he's done an accent? Did, did Chris or is he just always Kurt Russell, Russell accent? But did Chris did, Lambert ever really do an accent? Well, he <laughs> tried. <laughs> yeah, I think he well, tried. Well, wait, before you get yeah, to that, he did get to that. <laughs> yeah, he did that. I mean, he he had the the brogue going on, which he he pulled off well. He had to, you know, he needed the di- he mm. needed a dialogue coach for it. Um, I, that yeah. was that's always been my issue with Christopher Lambert. I call him Lambert um, as well. I call him Lambert. Um, <laughs> but, um, he gets a tea from me every time. He gets the tea language was <laughs> always hard tea. Yeah, I, I, okay. I feel bad for him because the the la- you, it's obvious the language was always an issue with with him when doing English language films. He didn't he speak English when he got great. cast. Yeah. Ray Stoke, he was yeah. great because he didn't have much dialogue. Right? You have to speak. He, yeah, yeah. Um, but he was, yeah. he's got those piercing eyes and the brow and, you know, just like very intense for those yeah. kind of characters. Oh, the look he's got a five head. Yeah. He's got yeah. Five I, head you know, oh, he definitely brow. does. You know, <laughs> yeah. especially, with, especially with his Connor McLeod. I don't even know if yeah. that was a wig because yeah. there's one scene where he sticks his head in the bucket and it gets yeah. wet. And yeah. I don't think yeah. you do that with a wig. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, I mean, yeah. maybe there was weaves in the back, but yeah. um, regarding Christopher Lambert, I think he, I think because of this is his greatest his, movie. His, in my muddle, his muddled accent, somewhat, it gives him that ethereal quality that he's been mm-hmm. through time. You know, right. especially when he lands in New yeah. York, and the co- yeah, and the cop says point. like, "Where are you from?" And he's like, yeah. "Lots of different places." Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a you good know, point. That he's, yeah. You know that he. That he, you know, he's not just Scottish anymore. He's an amalgamation right. of just all the experiences and places that he's done. So by the time he arrives in 1986, it's it's Christopher Lambert with this French, right. Scottish American kind of, of a weird yeah. amalgamation yeah. of a world it's, like a yeah. world accent kind of a it thing. Fits right? the story. In, in a it really way. fits the story. I just yeah, think it, 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 so, it fits that sci-fi style, like you're saying. It does yeah, look at that Sean Connery too. I mean, you know, yeah. you got a French, you got a French actor, you know, playing a Scotsman, and then yeah. you have Sean Connery, who's a Scotsman be, playing. An no, Egyptian. he's a Scotsman playing an Egyptian, yeah. pretending to be a Spaniard. A Spaniard, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. right. So you got so yeah. you say, so what to, to, to Dean's Very. point though. You you could argue, you know, that's exactly what happened. He became, you know, he was Egyptian, but then he, you know, through time, he became. Scottish made it to to the Spaniard, you know, <laughs> oh, way of life or whatever, you know. So this this wasn't just they had to they yeah. kind of had to blend in, I guess, through through time. I don't think and, Connery tried. You know, I don't think Connery tried to. Do, no, he, he didn't try. He was supposedly working on it. Okay, so he was supposedly working on some type of a Spanish accent. You know that that reading in the beginning, what you know, there's like a there's like a plate with with the, the yeah. stuff, and he reads it. Um, he was he actually recorded that in the bathroom huh. while he was working on his <laughs> accent. Like he was trying to figure out like what the accent was going to be. He recorded that uh, and he sent it over to the producers because they needed some, the voiceover and they just used that exact yeah. recording from the bathroom. Wow. That's you insane. know, like, you know, That's we've crazy. been through time or whatever, you know, we're, yeah. you know with the gathering. Um, which, which is interesting, but, but you know what? Connery doesn't need to try. I don't, I don't want to hear Connery so. trying to do a yeah, different no. accent. I yeah. want... I want him, you know, he's saying he's Egyptian. There was no Egyptian act, you know, like it, it's Connery. He, he, does, had, he does have those look. He does have the features. I mean, he's got those yeah. like really dark. Yeah, they kind of darkened him up a little bit. Yeah. The eyebrows and, you know, yeah. he, you the could mascara. say that he has a little bit of uh, maybe Mediterranean some. You know, Mediterranean basin. Mediter- exactly. Yeah. yeah. That that look. Yeah, he could be any one of that. Portuguese, yeah. Yeah. Moroccan. He could be anything. I mean, he was in Star Time Bandits, Bandits too. Bandits. Like he played, right. he played right. uh, Agamemnon in, in Time Bandits. Yeah. Like, so yeah. he was, you know, the, the Greek uh, character there. So, you know, but yeah. Uh, interesting. It, it was a, just a very interesting casting. Then you got to yeah. don't, don't forget. I mean, this is a British, you know, technically a British made film. Right. So you probably mm-hmm. had a lot of British actors playing American actors like right. the dude, you know, that got that gets, you know, the, the commando dude. He was in yeah. Empire Strikes Back. He was uh, oh, wow. Rogue Two. He was the guy in the snow speeder who says, you know, I found them. I found them. That's him, you know, in, oh, wow. in, in that scene. And he's a, he's there's, a, there's a couple of star. There's a couple yeah. of Star Wars connections to this yeah. film. Nick, I know you want to g- jump in, but let me let me get this out All before right. I forget. Um, the guy that did the the, cor- the sword play chore- choreography uh, worked. He did. He worked with Vader on his sword play for oh. the Star Wars film. So they got him. Another connection. Um, right. The the woman that plays Rachel, not the not the little girl, but the woman, mm-hmm. she's married mm-hmm. to Dennis Lawson, who's Wedge Antilles. Okay, oh, wow. from Star Wars. Interesting. Oh, wow. So there is there's a little Star Wars thing there, and then you can't yeah. um, you can't dismiss that this movie has the Obi Wan Luke Skywalker feel to it of the the of the, course the Padawan yeah. and the Master versus the Dark Knight. You know the the ultimate villain in black. So there there's some parallels there. But Nick, what were you gonna? Yeah. You wanted to jump in. What was it? Oh, was you you guys were talking about Sean Connery, yeah. and I I'd, I'd read that he only had a week to do this, yeah. to squeeze this into his schedule. And he's like, there's no way. When he looked at the script, he's like, there's no way we can do all this in a week. And he had a bet, I guess, with the director. And the director was like, <laughs> trust me. And he got it done in a week. So, Well, let's talk for a minute about, about Sean Connery in 1986, because uh, I don't know how he didn't have time. Because, well, he kind of was. At this point, Sean, K- Sean Connery was like the Michael Caine. At, it, it, at this point in their career, they were doing everything, but they weren't. He wasn't big yet. Untouchables was still a year away. Mm. Okay, he hadn't gotten that second. You know, once he was in Untouchables, he got that second second wind in his career, or third wind, because he would win an Oscar and that promoted, you know, propelled him into Entrapment, The Rock, and he just became, you know, Hunt for Red October. He became something totally different in the eighties. He was plugging away at like Zardoz, and uh, you know, he made a, a, <laughs> yeah. a great film, The Name of the Rose, the same year, which is a fantastic film. film. Yes. No one's ever, yes. you want to talk about yeah, a cult that film? was a great film. Yep. Watch yeah, The Name of the Rose. But Sean Connery was was still a name, but 
not a big name. You know, it's kind of like like his okay, heyday was know, we, the '60s, and right now we look back and I was like, yeah. "Oh, Sean Connery is in it." But at the time, yeah. it was kind of like, "Yeah, we, we were able to get Sean Connery," you yeah. know, well, which is a little different. Bond stigma too. I mean, a lot yeah. of people, were still, you know, Definitely. you know, he's still James Bond, and and in fact, he did make a Bond movie in the '80s, yeah. the yeah. remake to Thunderball. Uh, never, never say never, never again. again right? So which was not a broccoli production. That was a Warner Brothers. The guy, I guess, owned the rights. Claimed that he had when he did Thunderball that he co-wrote it, you know, and then he wanted to get that remade so so many years, and then Connery just did it on spite because he couldn't stand Albert Broccoli, so he did it just <laughs> to get back at him because they didn't get along. That's why he got replaced. Revenge um, movie, <laughs> yeah. revenge role. So he, he even did that. Like there was even a Bond film. He slipped that one in there. And of course, in yeah. his dad and Last Crusade, you know, so. Yeah, but that he, would all come after, right? That that, that, true, that, re- that renaissance yeah. would happen after this. So like, yeah, I think for, you know, again, now that this film is so much beloved, it's like it's in the Sean Connery canon of films. But at the time, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, Sean Connery. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, he's kind he, of in he everything now. He definitely you know, falls into anything. a renaissance, you know, period mm-hmm. too of of uh, doing the, the the characters of different times, period pieces. Like almost everything yeah. he was doing at that point was a period piece. Yeah, Rob, he did and Robin and Mary. Yeah. He was all over yeah. the, was all he over was the all doing, place doing He was that working. Kind of stuff. He was yeah. working. He was a yeah. working yeah. actor. He made that mortgage. He was a working actor. Definitely yeah. doing it, you know, and, yeah. and taking the roles. But he had yeah, the bought him. It bought him weight was growing. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. It, it yeah, yeah. But always a pleasure to see, though, no matter right. what. Yeah, he, yeah. He, 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 always, he, was, he was so yeah. glad to see him. <laughs> he, he brought the weight. He, he brought something. the uh, yeah. comfort. Yeah, he brought the yeah, comfort. Yeah, and he did. And, he, and then he got that regular gig on, on SNL, like whenever they did the Jeopardy skit, like he was yeah. always on that, too. <laughs> so, like, oh. you know, he was always, you know. amazing. He was amazing on that, wasn't he? Yeah, <laughs> but they, you know, the fact amazing. that he would come like every like whenever they wanted him to, well, like he would just come and, and, he put and on the weight so goof. quick. Like, he didn't take it seriously. <laughs> he put <laughs> on the weight so quick. He yeah. was just and then he, he dropped just it right off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he just took it right off. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> but let, let, let's. let's, let's oh, I got I got to refocus before we really go off off the rails. So. <laughs> The, the, if you've never seen this movie, it, it's kind of a, it's not a time travel film per se. It takes place over centuries. Yeah, right. Um, and, and basically in, in a nutshell, certain people have this pre- predilection to be immortal. Um, yeah. you, and you don't find out if it's you until you're what they call your first death. So when you're mortally wounded is when you find out that you, you're one of these special types of people and you, you know this because you get healed as long as your head doesn't get cut off. You're all right. You can pretty much survive anything. Although it does, if you think, don't think too hard about it, but as long as you don't, as long as you don't get your head cut off, you're okay. You're going to live forever. You'll heal. You get stabbed, you get shot. You can do all this stuff. And and, and so there's, there's this group of immortals that are, are throughout time and throughout the world, right? They're all depending on, on when you're born and when your first death occurs is when you, it reveals itself. So you've got people throughout history that are all, be- becoming immortal or being revealed as that to only to battle it out until the, till there's only one. And like I said, in the mm-hmm. open, there can be only one. And what does that mean? Well, they talk about this thing vaguely called the prize. We're fighting for the prize. Whoever, whoever's the last to live is the, gets the prize. And we really are never told until the very, very end what that is. So it's almost like it's not really that important, you know, and, and, which is a great thing. There's not really a quest for the prize because no one really knows what it is. It's more the journey of the story that that it takes you on as as less and less immortals are left, mm-hmm. um, which I thought was kind of interesting. You know, it, it was more the journey, not the destination. What do you think, Roland? Yeah, I definitely think so, and and I think it's it's a uh, it's showing those 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 individuals who who are the immortals, showing what the value of life is, and if they ever, ever can get full. And and uh, like most of the characters, the other characters that play into there's only like two or three. It's do they are they done living? You know, they've been killing for so long and they're just done living by the end of it and by, by mm-hmm. the part of the gathering. And everybody is, except for the, the, the character, I think, of, of, uh, of uh, was it Clancy? Clancy yeah, right? Kurgan. Clancy Brown. Yeah, Kurgan, yeah. 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 Is that, well, that character is the only one that just wants to keep killing. Yeah, he lives for it. Yeah, That's... he lives for it. And it's kind of an interesting play of humanity and, and how much is enough. So I, I actually found that really interesting. And I, again, that's one of the compelling things about the storytelling is it's that little, little you know, insight into humanity at, at a point, even though I don't want to get philosophical about it. But uh, yeah, but, no, it, it's, but it, it was really interesting to me when, when I was, well, again, watching it again. And so I trying to understand where they where they where they go with this. And like you said, what's the, what is the prize besides like, you know, a very public erection? Yeah. They get all <laughs> yeah, they get, yeah, and each time, each time an immortal kills, 
Each time yeah. an immortal kills another immortal. Yeah, they get they electricity. Kind of, and they, and... They're, not, yeah, they're never specific about it, but the inference yeah. is they, they kind of absorb you know, yeah. some of their the power, ability, the memories, abilities, the power, strength. Yeah, whatever yeah, it knowledge. is. They kind of, yeah, yeah, knowledge, yeah they're, not, yeah. they're kind of absorbing yeah. that. And then, a, for lack of a better term, they're kind of powering up, you know? Yeah. And Nick, this orgasmic. is what I found, what I found interesting orgasmic. is um, that the Kurgan came after McLeod before his his before he was mortally wounded so kurgan had us yeah. was maybe even t- able to tell who was immortal before they even knew because yeah. he was already and it seems like he he maybe even had a feeling that that mcleod was the strong what might have been the second strongest to, to him because he was always after mcleod specifically he he went after him be- before yeah. he became immortal he wanted to take him off the off the board as it was mm. early um and and then basically was always you know offing other people but his focus was always like trying to get yeah. to mcleod what do you yeah. think yeah which makes me think how many other people had he killed up till that point because maybe he's absorbed all that you know knowledge and what other second sense he might have had mm. um because yeah he definitely was hunting him down before even mcleod knew he was immortal right so it was like what's going on I, and my and, play on that was that he won the gathering the first time and this is not his first round maybe something the person like, who wins the gathering He's the one who lives for the next round. Well, yeah. that, was my, that was my fan perception. theory number one. Already yeah, out. That was my fan theory. theory. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. there's something about, like as evil as he was because you saw that car ride scene, right? Where where yeah. he's just, I don't care. I'm gonna run down people. I'm gonna go through red lights. Wait, I wait, the, wait the first one when right? he, when he sardine canned the the car with the with the granny in it, or the second <laughs> yeah, one, like the second one when he's got the, the and he's the, just the, like, the granny's like, like daddy, daddy. Yeah. 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 he's like hanging on the front, and then that's been his life. I mean, that's why he just doesn't care. He rapes yeah. people. He kills people. He's like you know? a and, and, and that's the fear yeah. that if he's the last one and he gets the prize. What would he do with whatever that prize is? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, you see Ramirez, you know, he's like, he doesn't kill McLeod when he sees him the first time. He's training mm-hmm. him to be better. So yeah. it's like, if, I think he knows. You know, yeah. And he said, you know, what, you know, what would you do if we're the last two? Right. And it, so, so it's like, I think he trusted that, you know, it, it's, it's going to be that guy, you know, it's going to be the Kurgan that's going to be like one of the final two. And you don't yeah, want it, him it, to it, win, you know, because, Eric, it's, you know, it's interesting because. <laughs> Ramirez was when giving the history of Kurgan, he said, you know, he's been around for a couple thousand, you know, a couple thousand years before, you yeah. know, on the steps of Russia and that Ramirez was also about 2000 years old. So maybe the, you know, those guys have been around so long that they've got this, uh, this, like, like Nick said, this other sense because Ramirez also sought out McLeod, right. the, 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 right. you know, so you've got Ramirez looking for him, at, you know, cause he's like, what do you want? He's like you. And 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 yeah. Kurgan is seeking him out too to to off him. So there is this kind of like you're the one, you know, like this kind of neo matrix thing going on where McLeod is is the one, and and it's either can we kill him first or can can someone that's good get to him? I think Ramirez understood he was probably never going to make it. That this guy was the hope at oh, least right. if he can yeah. if he can get him to be on the on the side of good, you know, humanity has a chance. What do you think of that? For sure. Absolutely. It's a second sight. And I think, you know, because like you, like we were saying, you know, they've gained so much wisdom through the ages who, who knows there was probably, you know, uh, witches and, you know, all kinds of like people dabbling in, you know, other, th- other things, black arts or whatever. They probably had accumulated some of that as well. And, and, you know, foresight in, into the future, McLeod being the chosen one. There was always that term being bandied about like the chosen what does that what does that mean you know but mm-hmm. he's jewish in this I mean, yeah. in this case he is i mean they knew <laughs> they knew i mean i think they, they most definitely knew and you know and, and when it comes to ramirez's death i mean he was prepared for it and that's and, yeah. that, and that and that always begs the question like where was mcleod during all of that i always wondered like where did he go did ramirez yeah. send him off i think he did i think he, he kind of tried to steer, steered him away yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think he, I, I think I he had a feeling that Kurgan too. was coming, yeah. and and he knew, you know, and like you said, they've you know they've been around so long that they've got those heightened senses. So I think they could sense mm-hmm. what you know. I think Ramirez was able to to sense what was happening or what was going to yeah. happen. Oh, yeah. so I need I to mean, get this because right before blatant, that, that was yeah. prefaced with the conversation about you you need to leave her, you need to leave Heather, his wife, yeah. who's madly in love with after he was ostracized mm-hmm. from his from his village. So um, yeah, I think there was that that sense that Kurgan was was closing in. Yeah, yeah, laying the trap for him. Definitely, I think. Yeah. I think uh, Ramirez was 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 a hey, come to this abode, you know, this broken down castle. But it was it was a, it was a trap. Well, it yeah. wasn't broken down before they started. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
that was it was right. indeed that rolling that castle was in de- decent shape it's until Kurgan like it. broke down yeah. the giant yeah. wooden oak door. Yeah. Every every time he hits a wall, he's I mean his you see how powered up he is. Yeah. He's like hitting the wall with like misses of the sword. And it's no, he's knocking, knocking down, it down. Home walls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very, so, uh, so, and that's a yeah. was a, just a great fight because you know Connery got like the one neck shot in yep. and almost got. Yeah, it. Oh, and he's right. like, I mean, that, that, was, that shows how great Ramirez was. Yeah, he, he came, he came yeah. Like, real out. close. Yeah, yeah. You know? And he yeah. goes, "I see my cut has improved your voice." You know, so yeah. it's yeah. like yeah. there was so a lot of that banter. Moments of, yeah, yeah, those those moments of those, banter. Yeah, yeah. Those little throw-ins that that you really you know it's kind of later. Yeah, later on, McLeod's in the church. He's like Ramirez's cut didn't go deep enough. You know, he's referencing. Yeah. Seeing that scar on his neck, the, the, yeah. the safety. That, that's my through. thing with, with Lamper, with McLeod. Yeah. That if he was better with the language, some of those lines would have landed a little better. Yeah. Right? The timing, I think, yeah. a little better from him. I mean, I visually, again, I think it's a great, it's a classic in in, in a lot mm-hmm. of ways. I came from that comic book era where where a lot of like you know the, the, the mags were coming. Like Cohen, I loved Conan. I was a Conan the Barbarian comic book. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I had a whole collection that, in my house. I loved it. And this was very much in that style of, of storytelling. Yeah, it feels I like it was a graphic novel. Jump. That it feels does. like it was a graphic novel, that's before, exactly but it's, but it's not. It's not. It, it could you know with the time yeah. with with just the different eras and everything. It really everything, and the, and the, the, shot, way, the way the they handle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. And the, and the way really they is. handle the the jumps. Yeah. Like like Eric said in the beginning, a it's it's part of it is the transitions which are brilliant. You know they really, mm-hmm. you know there's a close up of McLeod's face and then it fades into a, a mural of the Mona Lisa in New yeah. York City. Yeah. 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 Um, just the way they, you know, they don't shock you into it. They kind of just bring you in, you know, yeah. or, or when he, when he got arrested and, and then the, the siren lights are, are flashing and, and it pans over and then, yeah. and then you're in Scotland and you see yeah, the really sunset. Do, yeah. Yeah. It's, a yeah. it's like an overlap. Touch. It, like yeah, it, it's not yeah. ham fisted, and that's yeah, what you have to appreciate. That's what I'm going to use one of Eric's terms. That's what's so sublime about this film is that <laughs> it is easy to 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 kind of really uh, throw it away as a sci fi fantasy thing because yeah. it's immortals and swords. Yeah. You, yeah. you if you watch the the film from a filmmaker standpoint, Russell Mul- Mulcahy yeah. really did a bang up job. I mean, yeah. it, it's style and it's substance. It's got both. Right. And usually we some, talk about some films that are all yeah. sizzle and no steak. Right. Um, yeah. This has got both. He's got both there. And I think mm-hmm. his his music video directing helped yeah. him out a lot yeah. because I think that's where he developed the sense of like, I could do really creative things with the camera. I don't have to keep it so static. Yeah. And, yeah imagine you know, what I could do with a budget. He probably said, yeah, I mean, like, you know, like, he had to you cut your teeth you know? doing these short things. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Since, yeah. So, since we're talking about good. music videos, I mean, I was in it to win it as soon as Queen, you know, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. They did Flash Gordon, which was kind of like a lesser. Uh, this like was, this was like full this on was Queen. Great. Like, yeah, the, their music is integral to the to this film. You know, they, they wrote, were only they, hired they to the do the open. Forward. They yeah. only only hired to open the uh, to do the open when they heard, they saw the clip. Again, I'm I'm a, a trivia yeah. geek. So, uh, but once they saw the clips of it or the dailies, they just they were inspired by the the shots and the scenes yeah. to write the whole soundtrack. Yeah, and it opens with Princes of the Universe, yeah. which is just like as soon as it starts, and they use that that score throughout too. They use the, the Queen even in the older stuff, in the in the Scotland stuff, yeah. um, and then of course the one of the most poignant scenes is is when when uh, Connor's wife Heather dies, mm. right, and she's yeah. eight, you know she's aged yeah. out, and he and yeah. she's like, she's I, like I, I, I never there. wondered why you died. stayed. <laughs> yeah, it's like why did you stay? But then then you hear the song "Who Wants to Live Forever," yeah. which yeah. you know with Great. Freddie's with Freddie's performance, oh. Yeah. And, and I cried, then, and I cried again watching it. It's, it's this movie yeah. is yeah. Su- such heart to it. Yeah. And, and it's, we can't discount Michael Kamen's uh, contribution, his score. I mean, Queen yeah, wrote the songs, but they, right. but Michael Kamen came in, wrote, you know, score music, mm-hmm. which I think is one of his best yeah, it's scores totally, ever. I think it's, it's one of the best. great scores, underrated. Nobody really talks about it as much. He did some great stuff, I think. I think he did. I think he's better than. Uh, for I think James Horner, I might be going a little okay. on on limb and saying that, but I everything that he's done with the Lethal Weapon films, the Die Hard movies, the uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, I thought was a beautiful mm-hmm. score. I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, it's just such great, and again that 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 emotion that it, and you know in those scenes, and when he's playing some of the themes that Queen wrote, like the yeah. the, the music mm-hmm. from the songs. Again, it builds that it has that uh, it elevates it to another another level. 
entirely. So yeah, it's, it's definitely just, easy to throw know. it away. This film, but like all these elements that we're speaking about, from Eric, yeah. Eric you talking about the themes and the music, and and Dean, you you know, getting excited in the storytelling and the, the style. It's it's easy to throw it away, like you said. But when you break it down, there's like a lot of interesting parts that are intentional, not an accident. It's it's no tour film. I would, I would yeah. even call it yeah. uh, from that director. You know, he had a vision. He took these skill sets that he had and he applied it. He, he went big budget for a camera. He won these beautiful shots. And once you establish those rules, you can have beautiful shots. My only one of my critiques, besides you know the accent, is probably the sound design. It's just sound design. <laughs> I know we have we have oh, a yeah. tipping point, and the sound design <laughs> is just not where it should be. It probably yeah. would never happened in the movie today. But that's okay. It's okay because and that and the guy doing some assaults to get it way really slow. But that was like that's the what the writer said. Well, that was that was a little bit long in, in the original cut. It wasn't that it wasn't long. It's, it, yeah, wasn't it wasn't like long. it was. It wasn't like he was doing calisthenics. Really? Yeah, no, it, it was it, 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 one or two. I think he like yeah. fell down. Like, in, he barely in got. Cut. He barely got like eight yeah. feet. And he was yeah. doing some assaults. Like, like, you talking, right talking about Fasil in the beginning? Yeah. 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 He, okay. was the chore- yeah. he was the fight choreographer for the film, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, really? Okay. I could see that's that. The fight. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. the fight choreographer. Well, he figured, you know what? This is my yeah, shot. Let me, let me, yeah, let me do it. Yeah. Put yeah, me on a wire and flip me Let me get a quickening. Yeah. But 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 the sound design is like probably the only thing that would might pull you out. And and that brings the level of- for some for somebody who's not looking at it, you know, for hey, give it a shot. You yeah. Know? If, if you're like, I'm going to find something to, to bother me, is a sound design. But once I, you get past that, and I that's can, the rule I, of well, it. I can I can agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I can accept that. There are yeah, parts it's, of the it's, movie it's, that that's that do <laughs> scream low budget. I mean, yeah, there, you know, no, there's, no, sure. there's no mistaking about that. It, I mean, it, you know, there felt are like an independent film too. But I think even that was like almost like a choice. Like I could totally a, see him exactly. saying, I want to make a graphic novel, low budget film. That's the style I want. These are the shots I want. You can tell some of the shit, the cut in shots are low grade, or maybe because I saw the director's cut, there were yeah. added scenes there that, that were, you know, found and they weren't yeah. of the higher. Yeah. Caliber. Some were a little fuzzy. Yeah. yeah. They, you know, but, tell they were but again, inserted later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that you can tell, but, but otherwise, you know, it is a low budget film. It's a, I'm not, I'm going to butcher his name. Jaramush. Is that his name? Jim Jarvish? Yeah. Yeah, it's, Jim Jarvish. it's sort of like his style too. I can see some influences from that period, that kind of mm-hmm. filmmaking in mm-hmm. this, where it's the tempo, it's it's really just story. It's the clothes we find off the rack. You know, he's gonna wear one suit because I got a budget for one suit. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's so, uh, why I'm give, give him a pair yeah. of, of, of Adidas blue jeans yeah. and a trench coat. Yeah, yeah but that's 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 what, that's exactly. that's what, that's what I wore in the eighties, man. You know, blue jeans, yeah, that's and, it. You know, leather you know, jacket, we'll get, bomber we'll get jacket. The bad New York accents. <laughs> I wish it. I could white, have my eighties bomber jacket. And that's it. Yeah, you know? that's, that's it. That was it. it. That was it. You know, <laughs> but you know what? I think that's medium. I think that's what endears <laughs> endears us to this film too. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like you you're kind of rooting for it, you know, yeah. um, be, because of its if its low budget pedigree, where where it could be easily dismissed as much and be like, yeah, it's kind of all right, you know, Highlander. It's it's kind of campy, but um, I think when you when you kind of wipe away some of the campiness because there is a lot even even clancy brown's character oh, he's got a, he's got oh, some, yeah. as much as as much as he's <laughs> he's menacing he's got humor like he's also yeah. doesn't really take himself too seriously he yeah. like you know playing chicken and you know to- <laughs> tormenting the nuns and and mm-hmm. quoting neil young in the church yeah. you know yeah, at, yeah, at the yeah, time yeah. i didn't know what that quote was it, it sounded when he's like it's yeah. better to burn out than fade away. You know, like, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't know what that. I I know I heard that somewhere, but I didn't know yeah. where it was from. Then I'm like, oh my god, that's like Neil Young. It's like you know. Yeah. Um. So so there's 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 those elements of it where it's kind of it's contemporary. Also, it's not it's not trying to be highfalutin and hoity toity. Right. Um. Although it, it does carry some of the those pedig of that pedigree when it when this you know even it's even quite, the, the scene on the boat when in you know. Uh, when, when he's learning how to balance and, and yeah. Connery singing, you know, you know, like it, it's got some some lighthearted moments to it as yeah. well. Yeah. Even though no, the fate no, of the world is, it's definitely grounded. It's it's, yeah. it's small. I mean, it's, I think I, I speak to people about this all the time. You know, there's certain movies that are world saving, and, and certain movies are like saving that block. You know, and, mm-hmm. and it's it's sort of like this is a world in theme. It's world saving, but it's really mm-hmm. saving that block. It's a very small world. They've established the, the rules. You have some very bad New York accents, which which irritate me. But that's the film different. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a film of its time. Some of that dialogue yeah. could never get done today. Oh sure, yeah, uh, yeah. And, but that's okay because you you get a snippet of 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 a story that is unique that you know maybe cannot be repeatable. But that's okay. Yeah. That's what makes it great. 
I, I, you've, got, you've got John Polito in there too, a very young John Polito. Still had oh, no hair when he was young, right? As the, <laughs> as right. the side detective eating the eating yeah. the Doritos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Our little you look, you look very pretty, Brando. Yeah, like, a little he's creepy. Kind of creepy, a little creepy, a little yeah, creepy. And then, he, and then he's the one following her. So it's like yeah. that sub, you know, that that's kind of subplot of you know, it like was oh, pretty okay. bad fit. Always eating yeah. in the scene. I'm like, oh my god, that's yeah. where Brad Pitt got it. <laughs> but, and speaking of that, what th- there's the great scene. When when Connor go or now he's known as Russell Russell Nash, yeah, Nash. In, in in New York, um, goes to meet Brenda for goes to her house for dinner, right? Yeah. And he brings her he brings her some brandy from like the 1700s, yeah. which is really cool. Like, you know, oh, they show man. that one yeah. shot of his of his like sunken living room, like his yeah. treasure room, and like his all the stuff that he's sanctum. collected. Yeah, yeah, yeah like th- like that. imagine like, like throughout history, he's just been like collecting just things like a those are his memories as, 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 as if that loft apartment that he had wasn't enough right yeah, into ele- into this, elevator. Into this antechamber that's like yeah. that has all these treasures which are probably worth a fortune right you know like he's yeah. sitting on a gold you know like a literal gold mine there but it's so cool he's like sniffing the brandy i love that kind of stuff it's it, it's a bit yeah. dramatic yeah. But I kind of like that melodrama to it. They add yeah. that to it, you know. It does. It, it adds that kind of timelessness. Because that's to the it. way they acted. That's the way they behaved in the day. In the day, yeah. like he still yeah. has that. He still brings yeah. that out. You know, he still yeah. thinks yeah. back yeah. to those. You know, well, those eras. Well, he, don't don't he does the he does the scumbag move though. Die. When he gives her the book. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. She, she's like, oh, is that like what's that? And he goes, open it if you, you know. She's like, can I open it? He's like, if you like. Yeah. So then she opens it and it's her book. Like he totally yeah, outed right. her that she yeah. wasn't working the antiquities or whatever. And then, right. uh, then he, then he reveals, she's like, Oh, you know, he's like, Oh, the cop is out there. Uh, and the great line is like, what are you going to do next? Turn off the tape or shoot me with the 45. Yeah. Cause he totally was, he totally <laughs> yeah. made the, when he walked in, he totally made the room. He knew that he knew the gun was in the drawer yeah. and then he, Yo, nice view. Uh, you know I when like he was talking place, to the tape recorder. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so again, yeah. just really great writing, really great scenes that, don't really propel the story forward. It's just more character building and kind right. of you it, see it that, a lot of the character. Yeah, that he's got those. You know, he's been around for so long that he's probably seen it all, and, and he's not going to be. Is. Nothing's going to surprise him. His his, his, his his private collection are the things that don't die in his life. So you yeah. totally yeah. get it. The it, things yeah. that matter. Good point. And I think yeah. there's a Ramirez in that room. I think I read again, trivia because I'm not like that. Yeah, you I'm see his hat it. and his cloak his in the there, background. Right? Yeah, yeah. In the so background. those are yeah. things that are important to him. So. He can't keep, you know, a spouse, but he can keep yeah. those memories. So, th- mm-hmm. like you're saying, this is character building. This is your sh- you're learning, and it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to be like throwing this people like a hammer. But yeah. if it's there and it's true, right. it reads true when you the story is told. True. They, people it's, feel it's that the detail. It's purely, yeah. Yeah. It, the it's, detail. It's, you're you're picking it up in the back of your head. And yeah, he doesn't walk in and say, "This is my these right. are my yeah, antiques." This is not I've collected right. exactly. time. But you're not dependent on the written word. Special things for him. Right. Yeah, right. It, it's it's show yeah, don't it's tell, show, right? right. Exactly. Not walk, walking in and, and say this is right. every you know, and, and or, or he doesn't mention it to somebody. Yeah, right. That exactly. that's good storytelling. That's what elevates well it done. past the right. the can be mm-hmm. independent film that you can dismiss. Yeah, you know, that yeah. was just made for you know a Corman film. Yeah, you know, this is something <laughs> different. Yeah. yeah, and 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 it's interesting because the, the extended cut there, there's a character, um, you know, that is kind of like Connor McLeod. She's like the you know, the, the secretary kind of yeah, like right. a side character. Yeah. And it, and in the original cut, she's just kind of, she's just kind of there. Her name is Rachel. And he's always yeah. kind of like, Rachel, you knew this would happen. Like yeah. that's where the, where it gets a little clunky, be, but in, in the director's cut, they actually show that mm-hmm. he was in Germany there. in like 19, you know, during world war two and yeah. saved her from the Nazis and then yeah. and brought her. Yeah. And it's, it's and more like, an English accent. Which is yeah, well, taught, taught it. Well, she, <laughs> or maybe they were, they could have been or in, it was in English. English. They could have, that's, that's how I read it. Like it was England and, and there was like, yeah, or they could have been some, era. you know, yeah. um, somewhere, but he, but he brings her home, but, but he yeah. brings her and, and as a father figure and has a daughter. Yeah. But then, in, in current times, she's aging out also. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and, but it's still that father daughter rela- Like it didn't yeah, turn a, into like a, a creepy affection. romantic no, thing. Creepy, He's still like, yeah. you know, right. because sweet, he, sweet Rachel. Yeah. 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 Sweet Rachel. You know, and it's, it's a kind of magic type of thing where, yeah. you know, yeah. And so um, it, it's really an interesting yeah. how they handled yeah. that too. They could have really went kind of sleazy and made, you know, like, yeah, it was, uh, it, it was if, an if emotional. If they had cut that part out, like, they could have made it that, but yeah. um, it, makes it, was, that, it, it was an emotional attachment, not a physical yeah. attachment. Yeah. It That's makes all the scenes, it, it, it brings out the, the emotion in those scenes where he's saying goodbye to her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause you never and really that, yeah. knew what the relationship was like, right. like Dean was saying, 
but yeah, you think back and it's like, and he repeats the line and he goes, Hey, it's yeah. kind of magic, you know? And that's, you know, yeah. that, uh, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes it's, more it's, sense it's, in the, in the, in the original cut, when he's leaving her, he says, it's a kind of magic. And you think, Oh, okay. They threw that in. Cause it's the name of the song. Right. Mm. But in the restored, in the, in the right. expanded edition, after he gets shot by the Nazi, he's laying on her and she's like, why didn't you die? And he's like, it's a kind of magic. So yeah. that, mm-hmm. t- you know, when, when it's in the restored version, it ties it back, back and it yeah. makes so much more sense. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. why I really, you know, like the, the, re- the extended edition, it, it's longer, but, but it really, I'm, I'm going to advocate. Yeah. It really does turn this movie into an epic film because of the scope. Because you're adding yeah. more scope to it. I think that yeah. and then the, the songs scene, were written right. after they saw the scene. Yeah. So that means that title is actually what inspired the yeah. song. Yeah, but you're so not, we are yeah. thinking when you're watching the movie, it's yeah, like, oh, right. he's, you know, it's yeah. put in there. Yeah, you know, exactly. So yeah. that's, how, yeah. but, that's how, how, how it's being moved along is really yeah. interesting. Uh, where, you know, you're, you're, you're deconstructing, you know, essentially the vision. But, but it's yeah. interesting how, how it moves along in, in, in that way. Have, again, the characters have depth. Uh, you yeah. don't see that a lot in f- films from that period. You can see they have a history. Again, not usually seen a lot. A cab driver is a cab driver. You know, you, yeah. you get, you sort of get, even the hotel manager, which again, bad New York <laughs> accent, not a tough guy. We get slapped any day of the week. Uh, I don't know why you're surprised he's going to get slapped. He's got like the, but, he's got the again, sore on his he's lip. Got, he's got the herpes cold sores. Yeah. Like, you know, three inches again, wide. All, yeah. I, I'm, I, they're all British actors. That's why. Yeah, I, that's, that's right. I think that's the thing. We're Probably, Australian yeah. actors. Yeah. I, I hope so. you get your head chopped off. Yeah. Asshole. I, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, speak don't, to don't me. ever speak to me don't again. ever speak to me but, again <laughs> but, he, but even that character had an arc sort of in yeah. that thing he's a creepy yeah, London rubber so you had yes, a history did. you actually knew his whole thing you knew his element you knew that where that guy is and then yeah, the old you knew that the guy old- and then the old, uh, the old black the old gentleman sitting there, at, like he was uh, like, I didn't do nothing, man. And he's like, he's yeah. like shut up, you know, like yeah, yeah that, those that are just char- like, like characters that yeah. populate yeah. the universe, yeah. you know. Right. That's right. That's great. The detective that's on his on his case, you know, that's going after yeah. him, and, and he's got it in for me. He, you know, when he when he went to go see the the guy that got really run through by Kurgan, he showed him yeah. the picture of of, yeah. of Connor McCloud. He said, "This is the guy," and he's like, "No." Right. He's like, no, it, had, it no. was dark. It had to be him. He's like, yeah. no, it wasn't him. I, and then he's like, damn it. He was like mad. The freak was trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I find it interesting, though, that after a while, it's it's Brenda that actually takes up the procedural, though. She's the one and yeah. take that sort of takes over the investigation, yeah. which I liked, it was, which was interesting when she goes to see the guy. And he figures out this guy's been creeping around since yeah. you know whenever. Yeah. And he puts the names yeah. together and all that. And you know, it's, it's actually things. she's the one that t- sort of takes over the case. And then you don't yeah. really see the cops anymore after that, right? You know, they just well because she wants the sword. That's all she cares about. She doesn't care about solving. She doesn't <laughs> right. care about the murders. She yeah. she's she wants it right because she made a play. Like yeah. I want to yeah. find out about that sword for her. Yeah. It's more like an Indiana Jones type thing, like finding sword. this archaeological yeah. true true that. gem. Yeah. Yeah, would would like kind of make her career or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. she was kind of then she stumbles upon this guy that just happened. You know, she followed him and and you know find you know then uh, was there the for the the, yeah. the sword fight when he was fighting with the pipe and everything. Uh, and she got dragged into it. You know, yeah. which is yeah. uh, uh, you know, she, well, she does get dragged. And then it, and like I I think I pointed out in our our tropes uh, <laughs> episode, yeah. uh, the, there's the, the the scene where you know she just hops into bed with him, you know, yeah. and she finds out that he's immortal. And then the next the scene you see them, they're in the sack. Yeah. They were getting it yeah. on like that. <laughs> that was very so that, French. You know. That was a very yeah. French scene. That was, yeah. always, that was <laughs> very, shadow, very shadowy. Yeah. And, and yeah. you know, right. t- like, t- tastefully uh, again, tastefully done. They didn't go for the, and again, that, again, they didn't go right. for like the sexploitation angle of it. They and kept it, it kind of, you know, and right, again, you know. but, but, but the scene right after that was another added scene where they were at the, they're at the zoo when she, when he, right. and yeah. he tells her, we can't be together. I, I, right. I, can't, I can't do this. Yeah. You know, and she's just like, okay, well, have a good life or whatever. And like Kurgan's really, right behind yeah. him. And then yeah. Kurgan's yeah. in the background, which, yeah. which is, which was the which important it, part. Yeah. Because then it cuts to it. Right. Nick? And that's, yeah. and that's in the director's cut too. So yeah. those two yeah. scenes, I think really add to it because they weren't in the original. Um, and right. they add to the storytelling. The only thing with the director's cut, I didn't like was in the beginning. Um, um, when they're at Madison square garden, they kind of cut away and show the flashback. Yeah. And, yep. and I, I yeah. really, in the original, I like when you don't see that until after the fight underneath, mm-hmm. you know, and then yeah. they pan up and suddenly, you know, you're, you're in Scotland yeah, it, and Highlands. It, it's I, an interesting decision. Great. Like I, I agree with you because when I watched the direct, I'm like, wait, th- this isn't supposed to be happening so early. Yeah. What I think what the contrast was there though, was the violence of the wrestling right. versus yep. him having flashbacks of, right. 
of of him yeah. being in battle. So right. I, I kind of I it understand it, but yeah, I'm, I'm used to it, I'm used to the over the head with it. It changes yeah, the dynamic. I'm used to your I'm used to your the original way where it's all just that whole scene of wrestling and him leaving and him having a fight because you don't know what the hell this means in in, in this context there's no flashback yet so you're like okay he left wrestling and now he's having a sword fight in the parking garage and then the flashback and then you start getting and i'm a kind of guy where i I hate voiceovers i hate flashbacks i think that can be lazy storytelling in this movie it totally works maybe it's the transitions how perfect they were but it really added to the world building building and storytelling because you know you see the scar on Kurgan's neck before you find out what happened to you know things like that yeah. I just think really well done instead it's of it's a different linear story, and that's actually what's good yeah. about it. That that's what's yeah, good I don't about think the flashback here. It's a different flashback. story. Exactly. It's it's like an so alternate it's, story that's not telling. repeating like, it's most his, people. Well do. it's his story yeah. too. Isn't it's, yeah, right. it's a parallel like, story. It's less of a flashback. Yeah, yeah, yeah most most told. flashbacks just repeats. They were just repeat. Like, hey, I was yeah. I got hurt to before, now I'm hurt again. This yeah. is yeah. a totally different yeah. environment. This is an origin story, of yeah. a, a love story, uh, a lot of those elements in that flashback. Mm-hmm. So they're yeah. little like micro scenes of, of yeah. a character. You know, and, yeah, and, yeah, and, and they're, 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 they're stories unto themselves. Every bit could have been a story. Uh, with the yeah, beginning, and, middle, and, and, and then when it flashes forward, you have more of that background that about him, yeah, exactly. about him losing his wife and 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 losing yep. R- Ramirez, and it adds to a little bit of the world weariness of the character. But he still he still main, he still remains yeah. positive throughout all that because he he kind of you know like you said like you said Roland Kurgan is just kind of like barreling through life. He's just mm-hmm. a hedonist. He's just gonna. Yeah. Screw whoever, kill whoever, yeah. drink whatever, <laughs> destroy whatever. He doesn't like whatever. He just that's his thing. But you know, Connor. Uh, Connor, on the other hand, has kind of had more of a lived life where he's had different. Yeah. You know, he had the he partied with Castigear. It's like, oh, remember yeah. that party? A hundred. You yeah. know, so he kind of yeah. fell into the life of of just the different experiences and yep. then he had the duel with the guy and he kept getting killed over and over because he <laughs> yeah. insulted and called it a fat yeah. warthog you know yeah. <laughs> so there's you know like there, you, you see the parallels of of the of the different lives that these immortals lead to one guy's just thirsty and hungry for violence and and killing yeah. to so he can get to the end yeah. and and meanwhile i don't think connor was searching these things out i think he was just kind of living his life and as these yeah. people appeared he would you know like fazil like he just kind of like he felt he was there and he went down to and, he, and he's like because he was like fazil wait and we don't know if he was going to try and talk to him yeah. uh or or we don't know what is going to be like what were they kind of allies we, you know we don't know because fazil didn't seem like a, a really terrible guy he yeah. just pulled the trigger on the sword pretty quick maybe like i gotta get him before he gets me type thing right. i think it's they were the case there. because I'm sorry, Nick. Go ahead. <clears throat> no, I was going to say they were there for the gathering, right? That was yeah. what was drawing yeah. them Started, all New York. Yeah. So they killed yeah. somebody in New Jersey. Then yep. this was at Madison Square Garden. Then so yeah. they they were like, now's the time. You know, it's like we're yeah. approaching the end. It's got it's you or me. You know, so and I think that's that's, where... that's that's the heartbreaking part of it. It is if he. It's clear that McLeod established these relationships. They were like allies. Or, you know, through the ages, like he probably, I'm, I'm sure there were probably more than that than what we've seen. You know, uh, I think yeah. actually the novelization, the tie in novel apparently had a lot more scenes that the, mm-hmm. whoever wrote the book, you know, put in there as well. Like, especially with Castigear and, and, and there's more to that and there's more to with Kurgan, like way back in the day before McLeod. And, uh, but the you know like you say Kurgan going just you know ready to kill everybody through in his wake but he's he's establishing these relationships i think it's in a sense it's 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 almost it's very difficult for McLeod to have to do this and had to to even yeah. get to this point yeah that he has to kill my i have to kill this guy i have to kill Castigear if i if if, if needs if that comes, comes to, to that, the last you know two. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, just one more one more Star Wars reference while you're mentioning Castigear. That actor Hugh Quarshy played Captain Panaka in Phantom Menace. Ah, okay. So there's a yeah, lot of there's a lot of yeah, over definitely. there's a lot of overlay with Star Wars yeah. and people related yeah. to this whole production either either before or after. But that that's the final Star Wars reference. Okay. That, that's it. We'll leave it. <laughs> leave it alone. You Hugh Quarshy as as Castigear and his and his bottle of boom boom. Uh, yeah. He was ready to party. Yeah. He's ready to live it up, and then he's he's kind yeah. of uh, fighting Kurgan in in the alley with the you know with his kind that, of so, he's uh, got that what scimitar kind of, like that yeah, Arabian the scimitar, like, like the scimitar yeah, sword, and, really and cool. uh, you you can't you can't fight the brutality of Kurgan. I mean, he's he's got that convertible. Bro- I mean, he's got the sword that he assembles. Yeah. But just think of of how he wields that a lot of times with just one hand. So mm. he's got to be just really, yeah. even though you think that's a heavy sword. He's like wielding it with one hand. So that just shows you the power 
of Kurgan of just like he's just just like the destroyer. I don't think yeah, anybody yeah. really has a has a, a chance he's, against he's him. into the, he's into the fighting, he's into the pain. I mean, he had he had baby pins on his neck <laughs> when he wanted to disguise himself. <laughs> in disguise. So, in disguise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he, he's he's into that violence. I mean, even the reference with, with the prostitute candy that yeah. comes in, and again, they do that. Got a little they, rough. They, 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 you know, yeah. I heard you were kinky. He's like, Yeah, yeah. I'm I, I'm sure you are. You know, his his, yeah. his life of, of what he finds pleasurable is on the hedonistic, you know, painful yeah. side. You know, yeah, and, and that, that's what it is. But it, and it's told well throughout the whole film that that's what he is. There's no question that's what he is. Yeah. You know what to expect. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be brutal, mm -hmm. and it's going to be only self gratifying. Like, full full rape, disclosure: rape is, rape is on his list. Like, it's going to happen. Yeah, you know, yeah. It depends who's there, right? Unfortunately, uh, whereas he has McLeod, who, like we said, you know, like you, you were saying, I think it's an obvious thing. You know, it's that he is living life for as long as he can. He's come to terms. He'll never die. So he's having all these experiences, memories, which are, you know, the elements in his private collection being, you know, somebody who works with and antiquities. Again, these are, you know, perpetuating things that are worth, have value that may have value for other people. He's thinking even past his life. So it's, it's really great how they show without really telling too much. Yeah. And, and yeah. they're very, they, they live in their lanes and now they're going to cross lanes, but, but that's, yeah, uh, it's, but that's, it's all coming that's to it. a head. Yeah. But, before we get to that finale, I need to fully disclose that when this film came out, I used to literally have nightmares really? about Kurgan. I literally okay. had nightmares about that character. Yeah. Like it had mm -hmm. such, yeah. An, yeah. such an impact. I, I don't know if we saw it once or twice in the theater, mm -hmm. but I swear to God, I, I used to have a, some recurring nightmares with that character. It was so like menacing and so like just yeah. old, like just really cr just creepy and the, the yeah. black matted hair and and Clancy Brown's voice. I mean, you got to give it to him. He he he. It, it needed to be over the top, um, but it wasn't necessarily scene chewing. It it, it kind of skirts the line. Of, you know, yeah. if if the character was drawn a, a little different way, it could see it could be seen as over the top. But we we know that the character is kind of broadly drawn and big, yeah. so he can kind of get away with some of that. Some of that dialogue that he can really kind of spin into like 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 singing Neil Young. Like that was right, yeah. out of place. But but for that character, it seems like you know, that yeah, he's not out of touch. Even though he he does what he does, he's not out of touch. He's just living like like Roland said, he's on a different he's in a different lane, but he's still of yeah, uh, of the of current world. time that he's in. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and you gotta give yeah. credit to Clancy Rod. Brown. Yeah. The the you know the uh, the design. I mean, besides the trench coat, but you look at his, he's definitely into the punk movement, which was moving yeah. then uh, mm -hmm. like with, with his attire. So the chain, the know, chain mail, the, the chain mail, all this stuff. So he's yeah. pulling everything he loves that's dark and and has this sort of you know weight as a dark presence. Yeah, and, he and represents the current version of what right. he would have been as exactly. You know, so he's pulling with that, that with that jawbone he, helmet. And, yeah, and, the, and even that was almost like black and white. You would think like they were like digital. They they went post and pulled all the color out of that because yeah, he yeah. was the only element that had no color. Yeah, he was know? pale. His face was he was pale. pale. And the, yeah, that and the gray bone, bone helmet. and yeah. everybody else is in you know Scottish plaids and, yeah. and they're like in their killed colors and yeah. and this guy's got this you know this this. I mean, he's it's, it's, it's just black and white. And when yeah. Connor and it's sees really, him for really the first time, it's that reaction. I mean, it's like a friend yeah. Zeddy, Zeddy painting, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. So he called him the Black really... Knight. He goes, the first time I yeah. you know, felt this was when I saw the Black Knight. Right. You know, and that was, right. so again, that was ear, this eeriness. And, and even throughout, even when he comes back, he's still pretty much monochrome. I mean, the guys that yeah. gotten all the color pulled out of him. Yeah, no. still, it, he hasn't changed. You know, no, and they didn't have trench coats yeah. in Scotland, but I guess maybe that's the modern kilt. I, I did. That see might the be the, that might be the yeah. mod, like they may have kind of bit. paralleled yeah. it. You know, like he really it, wasn't wearing pants. Come on, that's just that <laughs> shot. They didn't, he, was just, uh, he wore jeans. Yeah. He, he had jeans and sneakers on. You know, yeah, jeans at, for at, a at bit. The minimum. Said, but he chafed. He chafed with that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's. I think it's probably a nod to. Probably sort of a noirish type of novel. That's what to, I think. You know, you know, the, the streets I, of, I think, of New York. I definitely you get to think the, that. You yeah. get to the you know the juxtaposition between Scotland and then New York and making New York just as primitive looking yeah. as Scotland was back in the day and when he right. what he yeah. you know went the the, the urban jungle times. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, you got the deep streets. You got the city, the cityscape, which is like mountains. So right. yeah, you have all yeah. that element. And New York at that time was the, really yeah. like that. That was not it like was. They oh, yeah. it, was a, it was a shithole. <laughs> they they weren't trying know. to recreate it like they did a Joker. Like they weren't trying to yeah, recreate yeah. it. It wasn't no, like that. So that they had the actual you know, like yeah, that was right. Cars. Exactly. Yeah. Cars. I was just yeah. it was watching the cars. Absolutely like that. And then you've got this great climax at Silver Cup. 
studios, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know how they get, they, I mean, obviously they didn't destroy that sign because it, is right. it still there? Silver Cup? Still there. Still there. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. I mean, it's I'm hidden by all the intact. buildings in Long Island City. Yeah. Yeah. Some, oh, Long Island City or Roosevelt? Long Island City. Yeah. yeah. You got to throw, you, you could drive over the bridge. Yeah. You, yeah, but yeah, and, and there's there. a great there's a great Queen song there. Queen does a yeah. cover of New York, New York, which you yeah. can't find anywhere. I, I can't even yeah, find no. a bootleg. It's it's never been released as a hidden track anywhere. Really? Like I would, yeah. And, and all you hear is like the final refrain, and you hear Freddie yeah. Mercury ripping into New York, New York as yeah as the yeah. as Kurgan is is crossing whatever bridge it is into into to go to Silver Cup, Queen's and, and the helicopter shot pulls out, yeah. and you see this car rolling down and. Uh, and you hear just Freddie just singing like New York, New yeah. York, which is yeah. really yeah. great. But unfortunately, it's, it's, it's got great well, elements. For yeah. sure, great it's elements. Such yeah, a great, such a great thing. Um, it, I walked into here thinking I'll critique the hell out of this movie, but then I then I like it by the did end. We change, so did, I, did we change? Did we change your mind? We change your mind? No, I probably had it in me. Yeah, yeah. I had it in me. I just want to be a bitter old man. Yeah, but we I'm had fine. to get to that soft interior. <laughs> Roland was coming in hard. We had to just scrape it away a little bit. We knew he was in there. We knew the, the uh, soft the soft I'll, teddy bear was in. I pop for ice cream for everybody. <laughs> speaking, <laughs> oh, of, speaking of ice cream pop, Kurgan was eating an ice cream pop when he yeah. chased after Brent. He's like standing there. She's like walking yeah. up the stairs. He's eating yeah. like a like. A, like a like a strawberry fudge sickle or something. Yeah, that's like so funny. casual. Like he knows yeah, he's in gonna, New York. Yeah, he got like, like she, he got she, it from the zoo, right? Did he, yeah. didn't he steal you know it? From he, the zoo? He probably he probably from? killed the vendor. <laughs> vendor. Probably killed we the kid. See, made yeah. a kid cry and just took it. You know, you she know, she yeah. like she like locks her door, not realizing yeah. that he broke down the door of a castle six hundred yeah. years ago. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. that little yeah. door, that little door ain't gonna hold him. That's not gonna stop him. He's breaking down oak. You know, yeah. uh, earlier, like you know, a couple yeah. of hundred years, and I'm sure the construct, the workmanship was better in yeah. Scotland yeah. in the in the 1500s. Um, so just just all those little great, see, like right. that. He's like he's like finishing the ice creams, like those little bits that playful, you get. playful, and to, sort it just, of add, yeah, just adds to the yeah. character. Just like yeah. It just gives him another level. Like he's eating an ice, he's eating an ice yeah. cream pop. He's like a murder, like he's a murdering, right? Like you said, he, guy. He, He's you know. not a guy who's hung up on the past. He's he he'll embrace right. the future as long as it gives him pleasure, which is yeah. ice cream. Yeah, which is ice cream. Yeah. 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 So it's and, and to your point, it's like he's like, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not forgetting the future. You know, yeah. I'm he's, actually he's, enjoying it. It's decadent. It's ice cream yeah. and killing. Yeah. And he's very yeah. I mean, obviously very confident. He's overconfident. Yeah. Yeah, that he's yeah. going to kill McLeod. And you know, and even though he yeah. knows that this is this is what's you know, whatever. Uh, but I, no, I, I, I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to get the prize and whatever it is, whatever it is. But uh, well, even Ramirez, though, he said you know, he, he, Kurgan is the strongest of them all. So he yeah. was yeah. he was already known or sensed, you know, right. by his brutality or skill or or just sheer force. He seems just a, he almost seems just like a force. Like yeah. he just mm -hmm. un, it doesn't stop pounding on you until until you relent, until you get tired. Like he's he's like literally right. like a kill, like a shark, like a killing machine. Like he won't yeah. stop thrashing at you yeah. until you make an error or a mistake but you get i'm sorry there is one more star wars callback i'm sorry i just remembered <laughs> it i'm sorry at the very end when they at the very end when they fall in through the the glass and they're in that big like empty warehouse right there's the, the yeah. scene when they're about to square off and and christopher lambert holds his sword over his head and his arm out just like obi-wan does with his lightsaber in okay. in the prequel in the prequel trilogy yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's the same move that that Obi Wan does when he was ready to fight, like General Grievous or whoever. He I noticed except that, for yeah, Obi Wan does the two yeah. finger thing, right? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. He holds the lightsaber over. Christopher Lambert did it first. I'm sorry, we got to yeah. get we got to yeah. give the points to Highlander for that. Yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah, that's I, right. I think well, they saw that and said that's a pretty cool move. So yeah, that's, definitely uh, callback. So it, it, it's in that world. Yeah, it's as in the a same Star universe. Wars fan, I always sometimes look at movies that have sword play as like a key feature, and I wonder how that would have played if this was like an you know an old school star Wars lightsaber yeah. film. You know, I, I thought of that with, you know, um, uh, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, you mm -hmm. know, things like that. So this, I'm thinking like, what if this was like an old Republic, you know, the, the Sith just kind of hunting each other down until there's only yeah. two left, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know Same what? type the, of the thing. world, the universe yeah. are connected. There you go. Fan <laughs> theory number two. There you go. <laughs> it could be there. There's a lot yeah. of crossover there. So, yeah. you know what, Let, let's, as, as we wind it down, let's kind of go, uh, if there's some favorite scenes or favorite lines that really stuck with you, you know, uh, Nick, what, Nick, what do you got? Got something? Oh man. Come back to you. You always do this to me and I should anticipate that you're going to ask this. <laughs> Come on. How many times you've been I'll, a guest? I'll man? be honest. It's the Ramirez scene in the castle. You know, I, I love that scene. Uh -huh. And what I really like is what they don't show. Like at the very end, you see, um, you know, 
Kurgan, you know what he's going to do to poor, mm-hmm. you know, to, to mm-hmm. Heather, but they don't show it. They cut away. And then at the end, when he kind of reveals when he's like, oh, he wasn't Ramirez. She wasn't Ramirez's wife. She was your, like, he kind of, but they didn't yeah. show that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they didn't so need to. Kinda, yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. what, like, his character, like, he's just so evil. But, like, that's him through the ages, like, dealing with this immortality. Mm-hmm. Some people will deal with it as heroic and be like, okay, I'm going to fight the, the Nazis. I'm going to do this, you know, because I know I can't die. Others are like, I can't die, so I'm going to savor the pain. I'm going to kill other people. Yeah. I'm going to rape and pillage because there's no repercussions for me. I will be the last yeah. one standing in the end. So I, I love that mm-hmm. scene. And then when he gets his comeuppance, he's got that smile on his face, right? I, I, I love that, too. That's a great death scene. So those are my favorites, I guess. Cool, cool. Roland, you got I'll any? tell you, I I like some of the camp uh, and mm-hmm. the fight scene in the castle uh, with, with mm-hmm. Ramirez. But it, it just reminded me of Errol Flynn and a lot of the stuff yeah. that I grew up on and watching those old black and whites. And they were going up the stairs and down the stairs. And I know yeah. it was heightened and it went over the top a little bit with the the st- And this is probably the, I think those that's the same styrofoam much of Star Trek used <laughs> so Same there's a moss over there too i think so with the moss growing <laughs> on it yeah, yeah like just falling down and like three like four ton you know styrofoam rocks with you know, yeah they, they tumbled they but, tumbled uh, lightly when they yeah fell. they tumbled they, 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 they had a bit of a bounce but uh <laughs> and a win. but but it just brought back a lot of that those elements and and that that being a swashbuckler and and like i said errol flynn stuff i would i get you know was it a Burt Lancaster was that, that also did those types of films? I forget. But uh, another guy from that, that era was doing all those films. And, and I, I just liked that they paid sort of a homage to that. Yeah. They said, yeah, yeah. this is a period piece. We're going to talk about the, the period. And this is what people do. This is our sword play. So it, cre- it, it, it brought, it, it connected with that world. So this director, I, I do, I do want to Arrow point out, Finn, Roland, that right? um, I'm sorry, Nick. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think you're going <laughs> to you say it probably. This director did an Errol Flynn biopic. That was oh, one of his last movies that he did in like four. Oh. I think he did. Yeah, it's well, called In Like Flynn. It was called In Like Flynn. Yeah, yeah, that okay. was one of his last. So yeah, it's tw- like 2017 or 2018. But but I, I want to make really a, I, I'd like to make a Star Wars reference if I can. And to your uh, to Roland, yeah. him going up the stairs. Uh, Ramirez had the high ground, but in this case, did. it didn't work, did it? No. <laughs> well, he didn't, well, well Kurt Kurgan didn't jump and try and flip over him. Yeah, a half a tumble. A half a tumble. I hate you. So Eric, you have a, what, 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 what jumps out to you? Two, uh, two, I mean, of course the action, of course the, uh, all the, the on location footage, all that stuff. But I think probably, probably the scene where Heather dies is just the, the yeah. that song. It's so, it's so beautiful. Um, and then of course there's another scene is when he's in Brenda's apartment and he, when he's, when he's got the, the brandy and he's sniffing the brandy and he goes into that little monologue about, 1730, you know, whatever, yeah. 83. The Montgolfier great, brothers flew their first yeah, the, You know, yeah, Mozart <laughs> wrote his great mass. And I love that. I just love how he just, you know, just zones out for that moment. And then he gets yeah. right back into the into the scene. And, you know. It shows he was there, yeah. like like you believe. Exactly. Like he was there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You really believe it, you know. So, yeah, I, I love that kind Look of stuff. Look at the trivia. You know the trivia about that scene? Do you know the trivia? I read well, it. I have it. it in front of me. Uh, Jim Steinman <laughs> actually did that to the director when they opened up a 1949 bottle of wine. And he said, oh, we're, really? we're breathing air from 1949. Jim Steinman wow. of Meatloaf fame. Oh, Meatloaf. Assist. Again, dramatic. So we have a crossover. Yeah, over, the the there you go. <laughs> over the top. So again, it connect. It all connects. It all connects. Cool. Um, I, I've got two, I've got two scenes. Uh, I'll go in reverse order. The scene in the church. Yeah, for sure. Because it's the only scene yeah. where they actually meet each other. Like right. we we don't know that they've actually met. Do, I, except around. for the time, except for the battle, yeah. except for when when Kurgan killed him the first time, we yeah. don't know that there's they've actually been have met. Uh, we don't know if Kurgan's been hunting him, but they finally kind of come to it. And he's like, you know, remember what Ramirez taught you. You know, like when they're yeah. in the church and he's gonna grab him. And so even even though Kurgan's a brute, he still is bound by the rules. Yeah. Of that have been set forth you know, through eternity, um, you know, and, and you will always be weaker than I, you know? So it's yeah. always like yeah. you get, you get that little, you get that one little face off, which was kind of neat, you know, cause otherwise they didn't really interact. It was almost like Wrath of Khan, which all three of us did, mm-hmm. uh, where, where the two, the two antagonists or antagonists and protagonists don't meet a- at all. So this was kind of neat there. Um, and then the other scene I like is, is a Connery scene and, and it's kind of, it's just, a, it's one line, but it's, he delivers it so well. And you could tell Connery was invested when he did it. Um, Connor's like, how, how do we beat the Kurgan? You know, and Connery's like, with heart, faith, 
and steel. And skill. Like, mm, like yeah. he just like he and he's got like that that glimmer in his eye. He's like, you know, <laughs> he's like kind of delivering that line and, and he it's exactly what it needed. Like that that hope. Yeah. You know, like like yeah, he's the strongest, but with, with heart, faith, and, and a little bit of steel. You know, yeah. someone might be able to do it, you know, and he kind of knew it wasn't going to be, him. you know, he kind of put his heart, head, hand on his heart when he did it. It's just a, a great, just a great scene yeah. to watch so it's um, a when moment. he's being the mentor. Yeah, I really, yeah, I really, I really dug that. I he's really got that, that smirk. Yeah, that, that, that does. Smile he's got that, and he's got that look in his eye, you know, like, yeah. That, yeah. you know, he's really selling it. So I, I yeah. you know, uh, let, let, as we wind down, I, I think someone mentioned in the beginning, <sighs> Highlander 2, the quick <laughs> So um, yeah. we, as, as Eric and I claim uh, Highlander for ourselves, we saw Highlander two in the theater and quickly disowned, disowned it. the we biggest did. turd of a film uh, and a yeah. sequel that probably should not have ever been made. We were so yeah. excited for another Highlander. It was like what ninety one, I think it came out. Yeah, I think so. Uh, so Sean yeah. Connery was now a big get. Like he now he was a, like, oh, they got Sean Connery to come back. Right. You know, yeah. uh, we went to go but see we this like, thing. Why? And, How? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we walked in and we were like, what? I don't understand. They, uh, I've never seen a film totally retcon a, 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 the film before and, and fundamentally change everything about the previous film. They, it turns out they're not immortals. They're aliens from another planet. They got yeah. exiled. They can regenerate. Like every, everything that Highlander was, was, to, yeah. was absolutely undone for, and for no apparent yeah. reason. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Was, feel about uh, the movie, the TV show. I don't, I, I don't remember. Show? I don't. You know what? I, I, I completely blocked that film from my mind. Yeah, I yeah. don't remember it at all. I'm surprised we didn't walk it. out. Yeah. I'm supposed supposed surprised we didn't a... just get up and walk out, which I never do. Hardly. I mean, yeah. I don't think I've ever been, ever been a time where I actually got up and walked out of a theater. But that could have been the <laughs> the one film <laughs> that we we should have. I mean, we just 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 the you know just watching just the first twenty minutes of that movie, we were like, what the you know, yeah. like so perplexed like what's going by on? it. And, yeah. and apparently I guess the studio kept tampering with it. And there is a director's cut of that as well. Oh, yeah, the, renegade the, edition. the renegade yeah. cut, which, which, I is, seen know, his, because, yeah. which is Russell Mulcahy's vision, but I can't imagine it being any, any that any, much different yeah. than what we, than what, what was shown. So I don't know. I, I've never seen a, it. And they did a third you know. film, which again, yep. retconned it kind of ignored the yeah. second movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I and mean, then another one after, and then, and then, and then like the TV said, they went, they went to a TV yeah. series. TV series. I, I, I think I it was to, totally series. unnecessary. Um, yeah. yeah, I think at I that point, TV series. You know, and it I was think they popular. wanted popular. It was. Yeah. Five, it, was. it was a popular it, it, series, but yeah. you know, at that they point, he's a McCloud. How many McCloud? How many McCloud immortals are there? Because then it was a cartoon. You know, it's like they wanted to bring Christopher Lambert back to play Connor McCloud, but he didn't want to do it. He was only in the first episode. So they, they conjured up this, like he's his nephew. Duncan McCloud. Yeah. Duncan Duncan, where, yeah, yeah, he's so, you know, and then they end up in the last film together, Endgame. Right. You know, Endgame before Endgame. So, you know, yeah. Without (laughs) Endgame, without Thanos is not Endgame. (laughs) And 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 now just, just to tie tie this up. Was that Nick? Did they try to revive it again on Sci-Fi? They did another one, another movie. Things I see a whole bunch of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's crazy. crazy. Like, now it worked so well as a standalone story. Yeah, right. Yep. Know, sometimes it doesn't need to be a franchise. Sometimes kind of, yeah. kind of like Jaws. Kind of like Jaws. Yeah. Like the first one. That's all you need. Yeah. You don't need to see yeah. anything else. You don't need to involve yourself in anything else. Now the there is a, there is a form. reboot and a relaunch trying to occur, supposedly yeah. with Henry Cavill. Oh really? Either in in some type of a role. Now I don't know. I'm I'm assuming he would be the Connor McCloud. Mm-hmm. Um, could be interesting, de- depending on the director. Mm-hmm. This the, the success of this will probably hinge on a decent script, a decent script because even Highlander was a decent script. It wasn't like the perfect script, but right. but it was the director that really carried it. And, and I think this yeah. film, you know, uh, if mm. they're going to reboot it, okay, I'm I'm going with Henry Cavill. I, I like that it's choice. Already, it's already the Witcher. I mean, he already is. Yeah, so he's already he's already got he's, he's already, already done died. the hair thing. He's already yeah. done the hair. Well, let me, let me so. ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do <laughs> you think it would be uh, benefit the film more if it were someone who was a huge fan of Highlander to begin with, or someone just totally coming in and with a fresh eye? I think just fresh doing his own yeah. thing. Yeah. I think a fresh yeah. eye. I, think a fresh I agree. Eye. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, if you yeah, get someone that's it, a fan, yeah. they're going to try and recreate it, which could you could get a Force Awakens. You can kind of kind of get a nostalgia thing, but. I said Blade Runner is an example when, you know, they, they, they were going to do the reboot 
I was like, how do you capture the feel of the, you know, yeah. the, and I like it. It was I a liked, brilliant sequel. I liked it. It was, I love the sequel. Yeah. I think it was fantastic. Yeah. But yeah. It, it stood sequel. on its own. It didn't try yeah. to mimic the beginning, you know, but, it, you know, so I think I always have it my made, It had a totally different palette. Yeah. You know, but it, 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 it was remake, valid. It yeah, a valid. remake yeah. maybe I, I could see happening. Sequels, <clears throat> yeah. man, stay away from it. The yeah, stay away from that. A remake, but again, the story so much is like. It's, I mean, you know what? You can even, as long as you stay in those rules, though, it makes sense. And that, that's yeah. again, we're going back to the heart of the story. If you stay in those and, and rules, you know what? Cl- Clancy Brown is young enough. I, I, I think yeah. he's still, you know, he can I'm do it. He has put him, come put him back. Minute, you know, yeah. take get, yeah. get him off, get him off, SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs. Yeah. Have him, you know, yeah, start working on that Kirby voice extraordinary. At least put his voice in there somehow. Yeah, you know. You could de-age him. You could do whatever. Oh, yeah. you know, Please don't even think he needs to. But... So, he, he could no, be good as like a gray-haired yeah, dragon. Yeah, like, I'd love it. Oh that. my god. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah, he's probably we, Connery's we age now. What well, Connery yeah, we, was we, back we then. Don't so wanna, probably... We don't want to do like Irishman. We don't want to do de-age. Yeah. No, we don't want to be. Scarred. I'm scarred. I'm scarred from the Irishman. I don't think the Scotsman de-aged. So I think we've advocated for this film. I hopefully we've made the case that it is far from a cult film. Uh, did we geek out about it too much? Uh, guilty as sure. guilty as charged. I absolutely did, but it's because we love this film yeah. um, so much, and we scraped we scraped off the outer shell of Roland. Yes, uh, and and uh, got to the bit. we got to the soft center. How many bit. weeks does it take bit. to get to the center of Roland? And we found thirty two. Thirty two. Throwing out there for any fans. He he he, <laughs> he, pre, he prefaced this by saying, "I'm going to nitpick," but I I think I think I we turned the tide on him. I think yeah, we kind of. I think I think we advocated for him, and and he he kind of got on board, which I appreciate as well. Even if he didn't like it, that's okay too. But um, I, what I'm going to say is, give this film a, a look like that. Sure. Um, if if you're looking at it as cult and camp, you'll find that. Then if you'll find what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah. Um, but if you but if but like with me when I watched it with new eyes from a critical aspect and taking out my fanboyness of it. Um, I got to appreciate it actually as a really well-made film and, and something of a of a of a bigger scale film than I initially thought. I thought it was this low budget thing that I really liked that no one knew about. Um, so yeah, we we encourage you to take another look at it. So um, that's I, gonna um, do it for this episode, right? Or no? Uh, Eric's got one more thing. I'm sorry, one more, one more point. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Dean. Like... Make it, make it, make it. <laughs> <laughs> I read a very uh, before you know doing this. We I, I read a very good quote, and was I think it's the general consensus of the film on Rotten mm-hmm. Tomatoes, and they said that the, the the great things about this film are also the bad things about the film. If yeah. you hate the bad things about this film, it also it, it makes the film great as well. So it's. There is no middle ground with this movie. It's one of those movies where you either love it or you hate it, you know, for you whatever go. reason. And there it is. So there you, you go. Know, so yeah. And we've That's got we've got four. Life. We're stamping four love it's on this one. So we're sure. good. Not John yeah. Lovitz, but four yeah. love it <laughs> yeah. on it yeah. for for Highlander. So thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, join us on on online. Let us know. Did did. Highlander do it or you just got no time for it that's okay let us know at 3324podcast on Instagram and Facebook if you want to tweet at us as well you can find us at 3324p we got a nice little short handle on Twitter uh, to tweet at so for Roland for Nick and for Eric this has been Dean asking you to please be kind and rewind you've been listening to the 3324 podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important. So make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 